Hello everyone, welcome to Home Cooking with me Hema Subramanian. We all love and enjoy some nice homemade snacks. And today I'm going to share four different kinds of snack recipes that you can try at home and enjoy. Let's get started and check them out. So I'm going to mix the dough for the momos. To the bowl, I've taken 1.5 cups of maida that is all-purpose flour. Just make it well. Add about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Next, add 3 teaspoons of oil. Just give it a quick mix. So just gradually pour water a little at a time and start mixing the dough. So make sure the dough is not too soft with a lot of moisture in it. Knead the dough for about 5 minutes. So I've kneaded the dough. Close the bowl and let it sit for about 30 minutes. To make the momo filling to the pan, add about 2 teaspoons of oil. Once the pan is heated, Add 1 tablespoon of finely chopped garlic, 1 tablespoon of finely chopped ginger, 2 green chilies finely chopped. Next add about quarter cup of finely chopped capsicum, quarter cup of finely grated carrots, quarter cup of grated cabbage. Just saute it for about 2 minutes. Add a few spring onion whites that have been sliced. Now I'm going to grate some fresh paneer. Grate the paneer and keep it aside. Add one cup of grated fresh paneer. Add half teaspoon of salt. 1 teaspoon of pepper Add about 1 to 2 teaspoons of chilli sauce If you don't have chilli sauce, you can just add chilli powder instead Finally add some finely chopped spring onion greens The paneer filling for the momos are ready After 30 minutes, we're going to start making the momos. Divide the dough into equal sized dough balls. Place one of the dough balls onto the rolling surface. Dust it with a little flour. Roll it out a bit thin. Make sure you don't roll it out too thin or too thick. Place a little bit of the paneer filling in the center. Starting from one side, start making the pleats for the momos. Just follow the steps like I've shown it in the video. Seal the momo on top and pinch off the excess. Once you've prepared the momos in this manner, next we're going to steam them. Fill the pot with water. Place all the prepared momos into a steamer. So I'm using a bamboo steamer. You can use whichever you have at home. You can even use the idli steamer. So that's not a problem. Close the pot and steam cook the momos for about 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, let's see how the momos are. Wow, they are cooked perfectly. You can see it is so beautifully cooked. Remove them from the bamboo steamer and serve them nice and hot with some nice momo chutney by the side. It's a perfect starter or you can make it as a nice light evening meal. I'm sure everybody will love it. To a 
large bowl of water, add about 2 to 3 teaspoons of salt. Mix it well so it's completely dissolved. For the potato chips, I've taken 5 large potatoes. Make sure you wash them nice and clean. Peel off the skin and using a slicer, I'm just going to slice the potatoes. So make sure you slice the potatoes nice and thin for the potato chips. You can see how nice and thin they are. Once you've sliced the potatoes, add the slices into the bowl of salt water. So what this does is, it will retain the colour as well as the vegetable will absorb a little bit of salt. So I'm using two variant cuts for the potato chips. If you don't have the crisp cut option, you can just use the regular plain slicer to make these chips. So this was something fun that I wanted to try with the other side of the slicer. It was really nice and beautiful to see this crisp cut shape for the potato slices. So I've made a few cuts like these. Add the slices into the bowl of salt water. Just leave the slices in the salt water for about 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, remove all the slices and place them on a plate with a paper towel on it because we need to remove all the excess moisture from the slices. Place another paper towel on top, just gently press it so it absorbs all that excess moisture. Make sure you do this for all the potato slices. It's very crucial that you remove all this excess moisture from the slices. Only then, the chips will be nice and crispy. If you drop the potato slices into the oil without removing the moisture, it can splatter. So be very careful and do not miss the step of removing all this excess moisture from the potato slices. Take a nice deep kadai, pour enough oil for deep frying. Once the oil is nice and hot, start adding all the potato slices one by one. Leave enough room for the slices to be fried into a nice golden colour. You don't want to overcrowd it. So this is going to take a few minutes. So the good indication that the slices are nicely fried and they are no more raw is when all the sizzling stops. Once the sizzling stops, that's the right indication and just leave it in the oil for a few more seconds till you get that lovely golden colour. Maintain the flame on a medium high while making the chips. Now you can see the sizzling has completely stopped. The chips have turned to a lovely golden colour. Remove all the chips from the hot oil and place them on a paper towel. This will drain all the excess oil. Now add the crisp cuts into the hot oil. Continue frying all the potato slices in this manner. Fry them till they are a nice golden colour. Remove them from the oil and keep it aside. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of chilli powder to give it a little bit of flavouring because we all love chips with a little spice in it. Add the chilli powder and gently toss it. Just take care to see that you don't break the chips. You can also use your hands to mix the chilli powder with the chips. Now if you don't want to add chilli powder, you can just enjoy them with a little seasoning of salt if you like that. So you can see those beautiful golden and crispy potato chips ready and you can enjoy them immediately once they've cooled down a bit. I've made two different cuts of these potato chips and you can see how simple it was to make them. You don't have to buy these chips in the shops anymore, you can just make your own at home. And let me tell you, they are really crispy and crunchy. You can see the chilli powder has nicely coated the chips. For the soya cutlets, I'm going to soak 1 cup of soya chunks in hot water. So I've taken the small variety but you can also use the larger ones. Just pour enough hot water and let it soak for about 10 to 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, if you can see the soya chunks have plumped up nicely, strain it and keep it aside. So you can also squeeze out all the excess water and keep it in another bowl. Cool the soya chunks completely, transfer it to a mixer jar. I'm just going to pulse it a few times to get a nice coarse mixture. So you don't want it ground to a very fine paste or anything like that, it's just a coarse mixture you can see. 
it's just shredded so just pulse it a few times till you get this kind of consistency next i'm going to make the soya masala for this take a pan add one tablespoon of oil to the pan i'm going to add about five cloves of finely chopped garlic one large onion finely chopped once the onions are transparent add one medium sized carrot chopped a few beans chopped mix everything nicely saute the vegetables for about 5 minutes add the ground soya mixture mix it all in add quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder so add 1 teaspoon of salt 2 teaspoons chili powder 1 teaspoon cumin powder 1 teaspoon coriander powder mix everything cook this for about 5 minutes after about 5 minutes add two large potatoes that have been boiled and cut up add 1 teaspoon of garam masala powder mash the potatoes a bit to get the right consistency for the cutlets so you can use a potato masher or a heavy ladle to mash the potatoes so you can see the masala is coming together very nicely i'm finishing off the masala with some chopped coriander leaves just give it a quick mix turn off the stove cool the mixture completely so i'm just going to mix it once with my hand and then i will start making the patties for the cutlets so this way the mixture will be well combined so now the mixture is perfect so next i'm going to make the patties for the cutlets just take a little bit of the mixture so you can shape it to desired shape and size so i'm doing the standard circular shape Take a kadai. Pour enough oil for deep frying. Keep the flame on medium low throughout. Now we're going to start frying the cutlets. Dip the prepared cutlet into the corn flour slurry. Roll it onto the bread crumbs. Once the oil is hot, gently drop it into the hot oil. Deep fry the cutlets till they are a nice golden brown color. Remove them from the oil and serve it nice and hot. For the toasties, first I'm going to make the garlic butter. To a bowl, take about 100 grams of unsalted butter. To this, just grate some fresh garlic. You can take about three to four cloves. Add one teaspoon of chili flakes and a little bit of salt. Mix everything together. So you can add Italian seasoning if you like to the garlic butter as well. The garlic butter is ready. Keep this aside. Next, I'm going to grate some mozzarella cheese. This is about 200 grams of cheese. So I've just used a medium grater to grate this. Once you've grated the mozzarella cheese, keep this aside. Next, I'm going to make the filling for the toasties. For this, to a bowl, add one cup of boiled sweet corn, one cup of finely chopped red capsicum, one cup of finely chopped green capsicum, one large onion finely chopped, two green chilies finely chopped. Now, if you don't want to add green chilies, you can avoid them. Add some finely chopped garlic. Add half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon Italian seasoning, one and a half teaspoons of red chili flakes, one cup of grated mozzarella cheese. Next, add finely chopped coriander leaves and mix everything together well. So you can see those beautiful colors and the flavors are amazing. Now, once you've mixed all the ingredients together well, keep this aside. Now that we have all the elements to make the toasties, let's start making them. 
take two slices of bread. You can use any bread of your choice. Generously spread the butter on both the slices. Now place the prepared vegetable cheese filling on one slice. Place the other slice on top and gently press it. Now we are going to toast the sandwiches. Take a pan, add a little bit of butter. Gently place the sandwiches on the pan. So I'm toasting two small sandwiches now. Once the sandwiches are toasting on one side, apply a little bit of butter on the top. Close the pan and let the sandwiches toast for a few minutes. Maintain the flame on a medium low. So you can see it's toasted to a lovely golden brown color. Now gently flip the sandwiches to the other side. Close the pan and toast for a few minutes. So this will help the vegetables to cook and also for the cheese to melt inside. Wow, you can see the cheese is all melted. It's so gooey. The best way to enjoy this sandwich is immediately after you've toasted it. So just cut it into half and you can serve it nice and hot with all that gooey cheese melting from inside. It's a very simple and great recipe for everyone, especially your kids will love this. Whenever they're back from school, if you want to make them a quick snack, you can make this and give it to them. You can see how beautiful the cheese is melted from inside. So you can use any vegetables of your choice for this filling. I've served these sandwiches with some ketchup by the side. You can enjoy it as is, but make sure you serve it nice and hot. Now, I've made other sandwich recipes. We'll give you a couple of links in the description. You can check them out as well. 